Affordability plays a key role in your lifestyle. Living in a more affordable city allows you to put your money towards other things other than only housing, or it even lets you have the chance at owning your own house. Hey everyone, I'm Janine, a local realtor here in the Edmonton area. Today I'm going to talk to you about what it's like moving from Vancouver to Edmonton and what to expect. But before we get too far, don't forget to press that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me, me with this channel and to continue putting out content for you. I would really appreciate it. All right, let's get into it. A recent report from Oxford Economics that just came out outlined the most affordable cities as well as the least affordable cities. And what they found is that Vancouver is one of the least affordable cities to live in in North America, while Edmonton is actually one of the most affordable cities to live in. So it's really to no surprise that there are many conversations happening from families and investors looking to jump ship to Edmonton. Having lived in a few different cities myself, such as Victoria and Calgary, I know it's not easy to make the move. There are a lot of unknowns and what ifs involved. If you are thinking about moving to Edmonton from Vancouver, I'll put together this guide and I hope it helps. If you still have any questions though, please feel free to ask. I'm always happy to help. So let's start with housing in Edmonton. The price of real estate is significantly lower in Edmonton compared to Vancouver. If you're looking at a standard family home in Edmonton, based on the data from the Canadian Real Estate Association, the average price would be around 350, $350,000 to 400000 That same exact home in Vancouver would be worth $1.1 million. The market in Edmonton actually gives family a chance to enter the market, especially growing families. This style of home that I'm talking about is also close to amenities and within the city. You aren't pushed out of the city just to be able to afford a home. If you would rather be outside of the city though, there are a number of suburbs around the area that are relatively close in price. For example, St. Albert is a very popular choice as well as Sherry Park. That's where I live. Don't forget to factor in your property tax too. So for the average home of 400,000, you can expect to pay around 3,800 a year in property tax. You can pay this annually or you can factor into your mortgage and pay monthly through the city. To, to get an idea of what you'll be paying, you can use the city's tool, Property Tax Estimator. All of the tools and resources that I'm gonna be talking about in this video will be linked in my blog post that I've linked below um, in the description below. So utilities in Edmonton. You can expect to pay between 200 to 400 a month, but uh, utilities will vary from house to house because of size, use, season, and also because there are different service, different service providers to choose from. Whereas BC, you only have BC Hydro. Within Edmonton city limits, Epcor is the only company that manages your water, but you'll have your choice for power and gas. My personal preference, uh, what I use is Nmax, but I really highly recommend that you shop around for best rates as these can vary. Keep in mind that your utilities will go up in the winter because of the cold. It is much colder here in Edmonton during the winter than in Vancouver, so that requires more heat, which means more money. When you do decide to move, don't forget to notify your current utility providers if you're moving out. As soon as you know your move-in date and or your move-in date in Edmonton, schedule your utilities. Sometimes there could be a little bit of a delay, so the sooner the better. While you're doing this, it's always a good idea to include your change of address for Canada Post so they can set up mail forwarding. So jobs in Edmonton. In general, you can expect a higher income in Edmonton than in Vancouver. Edmonton has a big industrial job market and growing in others. You can find tons of available jobs on Indeed. This is our most popular site for open positions in Edmonton, which I will link in the blog below. To get a better idea of what's in demand in the labor market, you can also take a look at the government's job market forecast. Again, this will be in my blog post. So taxes. In Alberta, we're actually really lucky to have only GST and no PST. So what does that mean? You can expect to only pay 5% in taxes instead of the 12% you are currently paying in Vancouver. We do have some extra taxes on things like tobacco, fuel, and tourism. So to get a complete breakdown of all things taxes, the government of Alberta has put together a resource for you that I'll also link in my blog as well. The weather. <laughs> this is a big topic 
a lot of opinions on it. So the weather in Edmonton is much different than Vancouver. Summers are both are hot and dry and winters are cold and snowy. This will be a big adjustment. But honestly, when I lived in Victoria, I was actually colder living there. Um, I feel like the coast is a damp cold and no matter how many layers I would put on, I just could not warm up. Here in Edmonton, throw on some layers, head out into the cold and you'll be fine. Even on cold days, we get sunshine instead of the rainy gray clouds. So really what it all comes down to is just your personal preference. The weather does though have an impact on driving. So you'll have to adjust for winter driving. The roads get icy and snowy. I remember in Victoria, it snowed like an inch and the whole city shut down. I couldn't believe it. That does not happen here. Uh, there might be a few things that shut down like school buses once it hits minus 30, uh, but we're always open. <laughs> I suggest you learn about winter driving. There are things you'll need to know like plugging in your car, which requires a block heater. Years ago, I bought a Honda Civic in Vancouver and it didn't come with a block heater. So yours might not have one either. It depends. So check that out because you will need that in Alberta. Don't worry though, it's not like we live in igloos here. It's actually very hot in the summer and fall is beautiful out here. You'll enjoy the long, bright, sunny days in the summer and the big open blue skies. Daycares. If you have young kids, you'll most likely be curious about daycares. Typically the cost per month will range from 800 to 1200 depending on the facility and whether it's a daycare or a day home. Alberta has also has a daycare subsidy if your income is below 90,000. Once you start your search for your daycare or your day home, I suggest that you use a tool from the government linked in my blog. You'll be able to look up the facility and see its records and inspection results just to make sure it's accredited and, and see the information on it really. Also good news, Alberta just recently created a deal with the federal government. They agree to reduce childcare feeds um, by an average of 50% in early 2022 and provide $10 daycare per day daycare fees on average by 2026. So transit and transportation in Edmonton. Transit in Edmonton isn't as developed as Vancouver, but we're also not as big. Uh, monthly transit pass is $100 that covers our buses and our LRT. There's also a lot of work going into Edmonton transit, transit at the moment. We have the new development of the new LRT line so if you rely on transit, I would suggest that you take a look at the map and figure out your route and what works for you before purchasing a home, just to make sure it works for you. You can find the map linked in my blog post, my blog post below. If you have a car, expect to spend less time in traffic here than in Vancouver. We are a smaller city with less people. We also have the ring road, the Anthony Hyundai, goes around the entire city. You can generally get from one end of the city to the other in about 30 minutes. It will also cost you less, which is awesome. At this very moment, our gas prices are $1.39, whereas Vancouver's is averaging around $1.61. If you are bringing your vehicle from it, uh, Vancouver to Edmonton, be protected. Be prepared to get your Alberta driver's license and registration and insurance within 90 days of moving here. Schools in Edmonton. If you're moving to Edmonton with kids, you'll need to find them a school, but where to start? In Edmonton, you're actually assigned a designated school based on the neighborhood you live in. However, you do have a choice if you would like to change it. If you'd like to learn more about the school system, um, the Edmonton Public School, has created a resource page if you're new to the city which I will link in my blog post below. If you have teenagers looking to continue to post-secondary soon, Edmonton has great options with schools like the University of Alberta, Grant McEwen University, and Nate. Healthcare and doctors in Edmonton. So once you move you'll need to apply for your Alberta healthcare card within three months of arriving here. You'll then want to find a family doctor. This can sometimes be a little challenging, so you can use the find a family doctor tool. This will give you a list of doctors accepting new patients. For specialized doctors like pediatrician, for example, you'll most likely need a referral from your family doctor. You can also call 811. This is our health link number and they can help you find a doctor as well as answer any basic medical questions and provide you with appropriate advice. So the final 
Find a doctor tool is linked in my blog as well. Recreation and outdoor living in Edmonton. Although we don't have the mountains and the ocean as a backyard, we still have a lot to offer. Edmonton is home to the largest urban park in Canada, the River Valley, and it is beautiful. There are so many places to, places to explore along the River Valley. You could go boating, canoeing, paddle boarding. So just get out there and explore. We also have Rogers Place, home to Edmonton Oilers, as well as our main concert hub. If you want to escape the city, we have a number of lakes nearby, like Wabanon Lake or provincial parks like Elk Island, or make a weekend trip out of it to the mountains to Banff or Jasper, both of which are four hours away. So things to do in Edmonton. Edmonton has a variety of activities for everyone, like take part in the art and culture here and go out and explore the Art Gallery of Alberta. Or if you're big into shopping, we have North America's largest mall, West Edmonton Mall, of course. So not only does the mall have tons of shopping, but there's amusement park, a water park, bowling, theater, and so much more. Edmonton is also known as Festival City with over 50 festivals throughout the year, like the popular Fringe Festival, for example. Safety in Edmonton. Just like any city, there will be problems, but overall, Edmonton is a safe place to live. Many people will have different opinions about which neighborhood is the safest based on their own experiences, but my suggestion would be to look at the crime map by the Edmonton Police. From there, you can decide what feels best for you and your family. Since this map is created by the Edmonton Police, the surrounding communities like St. Albert and Sherrod Park aren't included in this. I hope all this information helped. I know moving can be stressful and moving from a different province can even be more stressful. I want to help you ease the stress by helping you navigate your move. Before you even get to Edmonton, we could set up consultations, video tours, discuss the current market, whatever helps make the process easier for you. I'll learn what's most important to you and how you picture your home and your lifestyle. And from there, we can begin your home search. And even if you're not sure about moving to Edmonton or you just have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.